Welcome to this lesson where we will look at referencing different worksheets and different workbooks within your formulas. Now you are bound to at some point have to reference another worksheet in a formula and to a lesser extent maybe a workbook but it's nowhere near as commonplace uh, generally. So I've got a few examples here that I want to run through to show you both how to do it but also what it looks like. So when you're out there using other people's spreadsheets and you're kind of Googling stuff and YouTubing stuff, you can kind of read what people are doing and get to grips with stuff very quickly. So my first example here, we've got three, what I'm imagining are retail outlets. So three uh, kind of areas of the UK here where I'm pretending we have a store and I've got some expenses. And I just want to total up all of London's uh, kind of expenses, uh, but I want to put it in this cell on this overview sheet. So what I could do is begin by clicking the auto sum button, like we spoke about on a previous lesson, to trigger the sum function. And when it asks me for the numbers, these are now on a different worksheet. But I perform the same action. Don't let it put you off. Just go straight over to that sheet tab, click the London sheet, select the cells that you want. Now, as I'm doing this, notice that I can see it right in the reference along the formula bar. I can see London, exclamation mark, B3, colon, B9. So that range of cells on a sheet called London. Sheet references are always followed by this exclamation mark. That is just a standard language that is used. It's not that essential to know because Excel does all this for you, but it can come in handy to know when you're diagnosing problems and when you're looking at people's existing formulas. So you can you know what you're looking at really. Now at this point I just press enter. What I don't really want to do is start clicking on other sheets. So let me demonstrate that. If I press enter on this one, that will take me back to the sheet I was on. I'll get the answer. And if I look at the formula by double clicking, that is the handiwork, the sum of B3 to B9 on London. Now let me do the same thing for Southampton. Let me click auto sum, go to the Southampton sheet, select the cells, and then straight away go back and click on overview. And you can see what it does is it changes the sheet name to overview. That's a very common mistake when people are new to uh, you know, referencing across sheets. Uh, is that they go and get their cells, but then they come straight back to where they were. They, they want to come back home. But Excel is watching you, and it's going to change the way you're referencing because you're basically taking it by the hand and showing it there. Now I can easily rectify that. I can just go back to Southampton to change this stuff. Um, I say easily, you might notice it's put a couple of exclamation marks in there. So knowing this stuff is handy, you can, you can notice that quite quickly and correct it. Notice when I'm back on this sheet that you can see this blue box following me as well. Even though I'm on a different sheet, I have that blue box with me. So you always know what you've done and what you've got to do next. Okay, let me just finish this off. I might type in the last one just to do things a little bit differently. And I'll go to Cambridge, select the cells, press enter, close bracket and enter. And I've managed to find the total from each one. Here's Cambridge, here's Southampton and so on. Okay, so that's just referencing another sheet using a sum function. Bear in mind you can do that for any formula, any function doesn't have to be sum, there's nothing special about that. In the next example though, it's going to be another sum as it happens. And what I want to do here is I want to total all three sheets. Now yes, you may have thought already, why doesn't Alan just add up the three cells above? Because they are the three totals. And yes, you're absolutely right, that would make a lot more sense, be a lot easier. Why not, eh? Well, the reason why not is because that's not the purpose of this class. We are here to learn about referencing sheets. Now, on each of those sheets, 
the cell range is exactly the same. B3 to B9, B3 to B9, B3 to B9. And because that's the case, and it's not always going to be the case, but imagining it is, um, there is a nice little technique I can use if something's in the same cell or the same range of cells for every sheet. And what I can do is start up my sum function. I'm going to type it in. I could just click that button. I'm going to go to the London sheet, the first one, and select the range. And I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard. That was the shift key on my keyboard. And click Cambridge. Clicking Cambridge because it's the last one in that range. Very important that there's no other sheets in the middle of that range. They have to be consecutive. London to Cambridge. And you can maybe see that written, depending on how clear this is on your screen. I'm about to show it clearer, don't worry. London colon Cambridge. London colon Cambridge. And you can see that written up there. Also with these single uh, apostrophes now and exclamation mark. So every sheet from London to Cambridge. That could be 25 sheets. You know, as it happens, it's only three, but it could easily be more than that. And if I put my closed bracket, press enter, I have the total from all three, uh, three sheets or three stores as it is here. There is the handiwork. A bit clearer on screen, hopefully. If they were in different ranges, I couldn't really do it like that. I'd have to reference each one. I'd have to do London. See, it tells you to put a comma in the second lot. I'd have to do comma, same thing to Southampton, comma, same thing to Cambridge, and achieve it that way. So the formula would be a little bit bigger, a bit more daunting, but same thing. Okay, now last example, I'm going to show referencing another workbook. So we've got this month's total. We just did that. The answer's in C6. That is this month's expenses. I want to know the difference between the expenses this month and the expenses last month. And it so happens, if I click on my View tab and my Switch Windows button, that I have another workbook open going by the name of last month's expenses. And if I click on that for a moment, just to show you, it's kind of a replica of what we're doing right now. Although some slightly different numbers. And I've got last month's expenses in the same cell, cell C6. Let me switch back to where I was. So, I'll know the difference between this month and last month. Cell C8, I'm in, equals this month's expenses, otherwise known as C6. That information's in cell C6. Take away, and then I'm going to go up to my switch windows button, switch to the other workbook, and click on the sheet I need. I'm actually already on it. Click on the cell I need, and then press enter. And I'll get my answer. It is a negative 690, so that's good. Expenses have gone down. But by £690 since last month. And if I look at the formula, that is what it looks like. Uh, so you can see the other workbook name, last month's expenses, and its extension, dx less x, uh, in some square brackets there. Single quotes have been used. There's the sheet name and the exclamation mark. Uh, got some dollar signs on the cell reference. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video. Let's not worry about that for now. That's an absolute reference. It's coming in a couple of videos time. Um, but yes, that is what a, a link or kind of reference to another workbook looks like. That's what it looks like when the workbook's open. If I run that formula again, I'm going to switch back to the other workbook. And I'm going to close down that workbook. And if I go and look at my formula again, it now looks a lot... Uh, more daunting on the eye when we look at it there. It's got the whole folder path in there now. So it looks a lot larger, a lot scarier. There it is up in the formula bar. Um, it's in the data I've got on my Google Drive. Uh, trainee one is, is my username that I'm logged in as at the moment. But that's just because the file's closed. It has to have the full file path to it. 
Uh, as soon as that file was opened again, you'll have the nice, short, easy-to-read reference. So they certainly look a bit scary in what they really are, these references to other workbooks. And depending on where the workbook's saved, and you know, and your, your, your folder structure and stuff, it may even look worse, or, or maybe even a little bit better than that. Um, but at the end of the day, who cares? As long as we can read this stuff, we know what it's telling us, uh, we can work around it, that's the most important thing. So that is referencing different sheets and workbooks and formulas. Very, very important to know, especially referencing sheets. Very common that an Excel workbook will have more than one sheet in it.